Lancaster County, Pennsylvania is full of many popular restaurants that offer heaping amounts of Pennsylvania Dutch style food and have been doing so for decades. And this one in particular for almost 100 years. Many people drive hours on a weekend or even a weekday just to eat at one of these restaurants. But there are also some fabulous fine dining options in Lancaster County which have some amazing chefs producing really delectable food. In this video, we're going to talk about perhaps the oldest and most established of these fancy restaurants, the Log Cabin. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I am Danielle and I have this channel to feature Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. It's a wonderful place, there's lots to do there. But today is the first for me, it's my first fine dining review. I am excited to tell you about the Log Cabin because it's truly a phenomenal place with exquisite food, beautiful ambiance, lovely indoor and outdoor setting so it's a great place to go for a special occasion that's what we did we went for our anniversary last year and we had a wonderful time so i'm going to tell you all about it in this video and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'm happy to get back to you i'd love to hear from you guys and if you love lancaster or are planning a trip there soon please subscribe for more lancaster tips and tricks okay so let's start with location first of all it is a beautiful and peaceful drive to the log cabin it is very close to zook's mill cover bridge which, side note, is one of the oldest and strongest cover bridges in Lancaster County, surviving Hurricane Agnes in 1972, even with six and a half feet of water. So this is a nice bonus to coming to this restaurant. You can drive through this really historical covered bridge. Back to the location. The address is 11 Lehoy Forest Drive in Leola in Lancaster County. Here's a Google map zoom of the log cabin. Uh, it was so funny to me to drive up to this restaurant because it was literally at the end of a neighborhood street, like kind of like the end of a cul-de-sac, and I just thought, this is an odd location to have a fancy restaurant, but I'm pretty sure it was here first. Fun fact, the log cabin was built in 1929 using oak logs from the surrounding Lehoi Forest. Though as you can see by this map, there's not much of that forest left, but it's still very cool that they used these local trees to build the log cabin. So a little bit of history about this really cool place. During Prohibition, it was operated as a speakeasy. The alcohol was stored under the wooden booths during this time in case there was a surprise police raid. When Prohibition ended in 1933, the property became a restaurant run by the original owner, Chet Lisi, during the remainder of the Depression and World War II. The 1958 young man named Charlie DeSantis purchased the property from the Lisi's and started a 50-year run providing a high-quality fine dining experience that included some expansions and a growing art collection, as this was also a passion of Charlie's. The restaurant changed ownership in about 2010 to the Liddell family, and then in 2017, the Liddells teamed up with chef Steve Painter, who is still there currently. So that's a quick history recap of the log cabin. I always enjoy learning about how things came to be, and this place has a pretty interesting history. So I'm sure by now you have gotten a pretty good sense of how classic and beautiful this place is by the pictures and videos. It truly does have an old school cabin feel, but with some major class. The log cabin has 12 different dining rooms and some lovely outdoor seating as well with heaters if needed. Each room has its own unique cozy feel and I love that there are so many rooms because it really lends itself to an intimate and quiet setting for each dining experience. The views around the restaurant were also very peaceful and serene. Lots of green all around and dark wood inside, which all brought like a calm feel to the atmosphere. The room we dined in had windows alongside the outside wall, which brought in so much natural light and made it feel very open. Now let's talk about the food. Here is the menu, so let's get a quick glimpse of it, and then you can always come back to it later and look at it more closely. They do outsource all of the food that they use, as much as they can, obviously not the seafood but they use local farms and local companies to provide the food that they serve here. Here's the main entrees. You got seafood, you got steak, you got um, chicken, lots of different kinds of things here. They even had some just plant-based um, options, which is nice too, I think. And then here's the dessert menu, which I will tell you right now, the dessert we had, the sticky toffee pudding, <laughs> it was amazing. Super, super delicious. Uh, probably one of my favorite parts about the entire meal. But they also have these petite desserts, which is nice to have a smaller version of something sweet just to end the meal. And the ice cream they use is from a local uh, creamery called Fox Meadows, and they're located in Ephrata. Okay, I'm going to go over what we had that night and what we thought of each item. We start off with the New England shellfish and sweet corn chowder soup and the iceberg wedge salad. The soup was very decadent and very delicious. We gobbled that thing up pretty quickly. The wedge salad was good. I wouldn't say it was outstanding, but it was 
funny to me because it came out like unassembled. <laughs> you just kind of had cut it up the way you wanted it, but it was good. Just wasn't as fascinating as the soup to me. And then for our entrees, Dan got the cabin burger and he said it was good. The fries were extremely good. That so was like an A plus. So I had the scallop and market cod cake and it came with potatoes, grilled asparagus, and balsamic beets with basil pesto. The scallop and cod cake was good. Um, I don't like a lot of filler, I like the rich buttery taste of seafood. So to me, it was too much filler, too much fried outside. If they would have offered a broiled option, I would have loved that. But it was so good. The asparagus is done crisp tender very, very well. The potatoes were amazing. So creamy and rich. I loved them and the beets. I honestly don't have much of an impression about those. They were just fine. The sticky toffee pudding was remarkable. And even though we were super full, we still ate it and enjoyed every last bit we could eat. Um, I do think it's a nice option or a smaller version, but I love when people make sticky toffee pudding, so I had to get that one. It was very, very good. So I will say the best two things we ate, in my opinion, were the chowder and the dessert for sure. They do have a nice selection of wines and drinks. I got the Moscato. It was one of the best Moscatos I've ever had, actually. The staff at the Law Cabin were all very welcoming, professional, courteous, very um, high on their etiquette. I appreciated the fact that they weren't always there. They gave, they gave people a lot of space and a lot of time to themselves and their dining experience to enjoy that time with the person they came with. So I did appreciate that too. But they definitely served us well and kept their waters full and all that stuff. So good job for the staff for sure. The hours of the log cabin are Tuesdays through Thursdays, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. They are closed on Sunday and Monday. They offer musical guests every Friday and Saturday night. They also offer some fun special events throughout the year, like here and there, so just need to check the website for that. For example, they had an Easter brunch, they have a Mother's Day brunch, they have a Thanksgiving Day feast, they also have a Prohibition repeal party in December and then New Year's Eve, so, and St. Patrick's Day, so just check their website for all that stuff. They do encourage you to make a reservation, you can do so online through their website, or you can call the number on the website also to make a reservation. Last little piece of item I want to review is the artwork. So I mentioned earlier that Charlie DeSantis loved art and food. That's why he purchased this property and filled it with artwork. Over 100 paintings, etchings, woodcuts, and other artwork are displayed throughout the log cabin currently, even some of his work. So there's a lot of art and you're free to roam about and look at the different rooms, and look at the different artwork. So it's a beautiful place, great place, I think, for a special occasion. So that's it. That's the basic review of the log cabin. It was a lovely place. Very clean, very delicious, very um, high in etiquette and manners and professionalism, and just a great place for a fancy kind of special occasion. If any of you have been to the log cabin, let me know what you thought of it. Or if you've been to other like fancy restaurants in Lancaster, or you have a recommendation for me, please leave that all in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. Hope you enjoy your next adventure. Thanks again for watching.